will press record. So just as a reminder, so that we're all on the same page here, section 4.1, online homework is due Friday by midnight. And section 4. Point, here I can write that down, 4.1, online homework is due this Friday by midnight. And 4.2, online homework is due Monday by midnight. Okay. All right. So, um, and yesterday, not yesterday, sorry, Monday in class, I went through pretty much how to do all the 4.2 problems. So if you weren't here, get the recording. If you don't remember, get the recording. So what we're going to do today is start talking about the next section, 4.3. Hi, Finn. Um, I just made this announcement about homework that's due, um, just so that you're aware of it. All right, so, and I will send out my usual class email tomorrow, you know, like I normally do on Thursdays. So this is gonna be really fun. Now, I'm gonna motivate this section by kind of going back to some things that we talked about and had to figure out in section 4.1, okay? So suppose you start with the population of 500 and it doubles every day. The first thing that I want us to do is find the equation of this exponential function, okay? This is what I mean when I say we're going back to kind of the section 4.1 problem because these are the sorts of things that we played with in that section, okay? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let X represent the number of days since we started measuring this population. By defining X to be this, I claim that gives us our value of A, okay? If I let X represent the number of days since we started measuring, what is my value of A here? It's 500, right? That is the starting measurement. Okay. Now, from here, we need to find our value of B. Now, soon enough, you're going to know when things double what the value of B is. But let's just use an ordered pair and use some information that we were given. Do you agree that if on day zero, we had 500 of whatever this population is, on day one, we're going to have double that or 1,000? Stop me if you have a question, OK? Well, I claim we can take this ordered pair and plug it in for X and our function value in order to get B. You agree? How do I solve for B here? Divide both sides by 500 and we're gonna get B to be two. So, we have this equation for our exponential function. Y'all with me here? Cool. Okay, notice it makes sense that it's doubling because my B value is two. So if I wanna find my growth rate, I could solve for R because two is one plus R. So we have 100% growth. Okay. So this is some of what we were talking about in um, section 4.1. And then we could ask ourselves the very interesting question, what is the population 
after 10 days. Could we determine that? Yeah, how would we do that given this function? We would plug in x equals what? 10, right? Wouldn't we find, well, if it's after 10 days, what we would do is compute f of 10. So we would compute 500 times two to the 10th power. And you'll see that we're gonna get 512,000. Holy smokes, that's a lot. Hopefully it's not yucky bacteria. Okay. So again, we have this equation and we found it to be really useful assuming that we cared what the population was after a particular number of days. Now, another very reasonable question to ask is how about when will the population reach 3,500? This is a different sort of question because notice in our first question, we were given our X value and we wanted to find our function value. Okay, now we're given the population and we want to know when. So do you see how now what we're wanting to do is find X when our function value is 3,500? Well, so we say, okay, let's plug it in. You with me this far? Okay, well, what would be my first step in solving for X? Yeah, get rid of the number in front. So we would divide both sides by 500 and we would get seven is equal to two to the X. Okay, now I wanna make a quick comment right here. If I was solving seven is equal to say b squared, this is what we have been playing with. And I'm putting this right next to this to contrast the difference here, okay? In our new situation, we have our base. We gotta find our exponent. In the situation we've been dealing with thus far, we have our exponent we wanted to find our base. So how would we do that in this particular instance? Yeah, we would raise both sides to the one half power and we would compute seven to the one half power and whatever that is, we'd be like, cool. Okay, we're in a different situation now, okay? So how, again, I wanna know what X is. I gotta get it out of the exponent, don't I? Like, mm, you're stuck in here. Okay, what would be a way we could get rid of our X and our exponent? I mean, sometimes people say, well, how about we raise both sides to the one over X power? But I claim there, we're just shifting our problems <laughs> because it is the case that we would have a two here but now we have a one over X power here and it's like, yuck. That's even worse in a certain sense, isn't it? We've just moved our problems over to the left. <laughs> okay, how do we get X all by its lonesome? Do you all see that this is a problem or at least a concern? Okay. Well, again, essentially, if we're wanting to solve and just using these particular numbers, do you agree that what, we're, what we have here is an exponential function on our left side? And we want to know when our exponential function is equal to a particular value, okay? Well, wouldn't it be awesome if we could somehow undo that exponential function? Like somehow if we could undo this function, we should be in business, 
Okay. Well, we've talked about undoing functions back in chapter one. Those were called inverse functions, right? If your function does something, your inverse function then undoes it. Okay. So essentially, <clears throat> What I want to say is as follows. To undo this function, we use the inverse function. So what our goal is, is first to ask ourselves, do exponential functions have inverses? And if so, let's find it. Cool? Well, first off, I claim exponential functions have inverses. We know that because we know what the general graph of our exponential functions look like. This is a function, it passes the vertical line test, and it's a one-to-one -one function because it passes the horizontal line test. And once you have a one-to-one -one function, you know you have an inverse, okay? So we know an inverse exists, precisely because it's a one-to-one -one function. And essentially what we're saying is, is if this is where our function value seven, and this is our function two to the X, we wanna find the X value that brings us there. Make sense? All right. So number one, we know an inverse exists. Number two, how do we find it? Well, you may or may not recall that the way we found our inverse functions way back when in chapter one first thing we did is we switched our x and our y. Remember that? And then the second thing we did is we solved for y. Do you kind of sort of remember that from chapter one? Okay, well, let's do it. We've got the function y equals two to the x in this particular situation. Well, we can certainly switch our x and our y. That's like the doable part, right? x is equal to two to the y. But now we need to solve for y, and we're still in that same problem, okay? We have no way to solve for y. We know an inverse exists, and it must be equivalent to x is equal to two to the y. But the thing is, we want to write it as y equals some value. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is define a function. Okay. So here's what I'm going to tell you. We know this exists. We've got to write it out somehow. So what we do is we define y equals log base a of x to be equivalent to x equals a to the power of y. Now I'm just using a instead of two. This equivalence is absolutely essential. All right, so let's get this going here. We have a function, our exponential function to be a to the x. By definition, the inverse is log base a of x. And I'm telling you that f and g are inverses of each other. Now, what we're gonna do is practice getting used to this notation. 
Okay. Cause it is really funky. But what this says by these two things being inverses, first off, notice in my function f, a is the base of my exponent. And in the inverse, a is what we call the base of our logarithm. Okay. Now, I want to make two broad generalizations that we're especially going to come back to in the next section. But if these are inverses, don't we know? that f of g of x is x and g of f of x is x, right? Because the way we verify that two functions are inverses of each other is by doing the composition and you get out what you started with. You get out what you started with. Now, I'm going to show you this in a picture. And we're going to keep this in the back of our heads as we proceed, okay? Let's look at this composition, okay? We're starting with x. Which function are we putting it in first over here? g, putting it in g. Well, my function g says, okay, take the log base a of x. Yes? Now, if these are inverses, by plugging this output into my original function, into my, excuse me, by plugging this output into the inverse function, we should get back to where it started. In other words, if I plug log base A of X into F, okay, what does that look like? Well, what does it mean to compute F of this shipwreck? means everywhere where we see an x in our function f, we're going to plug in log base a. In other words, a to the log base a of x has to be equal to x. This is precisely because they're inverse functions. You start with x, you first plug it in the log, and whatever comes out, you plug in the exponential, and you get back to where you started. We could also go the other way. We could look at this one. We start with X and we first put it in our function F. Well, if I plug X in my function F, A to the X is gonna come out. And presumably, if I plug that in my function G, I'm gonna get back to where I started. Well, we started with x, we plugged it into our function f, and we got a to the x. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking a to the x and I'm plugging it in my function g. What does it mean to compute g of this yuck? It means everywhere where we see an x in our function g, we're gonna plug this in. So that's log base a of a to the x, and we know that has to be equal to x. Okay, this is another really, really important property. We'll get to it in the next section, but I needed to bring it up now because these are precisely because they're inverses. So you start with a value, you plug it in the exponential function, you plug the output in the log, and you get back to where you started. So one of the most important things starting to play with these functions is getting used to practicing because having a log in there is kind of funky. And I'll talk more about what it is when we're playing around with logs. Um, I mean, I don't know, you've all heard of like the Richter scale to measure earthquakes, decibels to measure sound. Um, all of those are measured on log scales. When um, the coronavirus was a really big deal and they started looking at the rate of growth, um, they would look at graphs more often on log scales as opposed to um, just our regular linear scales. So I will talk more about logs and what we're looking for 
But essentially what I want us to do is just get used to this notation. These are equivalent. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is play with this equivalence. Notice the base of our log is the base. You bebop to the other side of the equal sign to get your exponent, and then you have x. Okay, so what if I have 2 to the fourth is equal to 16? I think you'll grant me that that's a very true statement. What if I want to write this? as a log. Well, I'm starting in this form and I want to move to that form. What is my y value here? Isn't that precisely my exponent? Equals log, what's my base? Two of 16. Notice two to the fourth equals 16. So when we want to find our y, we're looking for the exponent. I think you'll grant me that 3 to the negative fourth power is 1 over 81. OK, right, because 3 to the negative fourth is 1 over 3 to the fourth. And 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 is 81. OK, we're not solving anything here. I'm telling you just a true statement. How do we write this as a log? Well, what's my y value? It's my exponent. Negative 4 equals log base 3 of 1 over 81. Now what we want to do is to get practice with this equivalence is let's start in log form and change it to equivalent exponential form. This is meaningless, right? There's not much we can do with this. So one of the things that you're going to see is that we are going to be changing things to equivalent exponential form a ton, okay? So I'm telling you log base four of two is one half. Okay. I swear I'm not a liar about this. Okay. Well, what I want us to do is change this to equivalent exponential form. Okay. What's the base of my exponent? Four. to the one half equals two. And do you all agree with me that the square root of four is two? How about log base 10 of a thousand equals three? Can we write that in equivalent to exponential form? Okay, my base is 10. And I think you'll grant me that 10 raised to the third power sure is a thousand. You with me here? All right. So keeping this equivalence in mind, y equals log base a of x, a to the y is equal to x. Can we solve log base 3 of 27? I claim we can. Let's call it, what day is today? W for Wednesday. Okay, we want to find the value of W. So how can we do this? Well, we can change it to equivalent exponential form. Tell me what that would look like. Three to the W is 27. Isn't 27 the same thing as three cubed? 
Yeah. Okay. So if three to the W power is three to the third power, isn't W equal to three? I mean, if two things with the same base are set equal, their exponents must be the same. So we can say that log base three of 27 is three. Now we were only able to solve this because we were given really nice, carefully crafted numbers, but your calculator couldn't even do this. It only if you change the base, your calculator only knows how to compute in two bases. Okay, so what if I wanted you to find, this is another carefully crafted example, log base eight of two. I'll call this T because tomorrow's Thursday and I'm not just very original today. Okay, well, how do I change that to equivalent exponential form? Eight to the T is two. Can I rewrite eight with a base of two? Yeah. Two raised to what power gives you eight? Three, right? Two times two is four times two is eight. So can't I say that's two cubed to the T is equal to two? Two cubed is eight. Eight raised to the power of T. When you raise something to a power raised to another power, what do you do to your exponents? Multiply them. It's okay. When you multiply two things with the same base, you add your exponents. What is my exponent right here? One. So doesn't 3t have to be equal to 1? In other words, 1 third. And I think you'll grant me that the cube root of 8 is 2. So there's two bases that come up really frequently. And the only two bases that your calculator can compute directly unless you use something called a change of base formula are as follows. Two bases come up very frequently. One of them is base 10 and the other one is base E. Remember, E is our fun irrational number about 2.718, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So when you have base 10, you can write that as log base 10 of X. But because this comes up so frequently, we tend not to write the base and we just write log X. And this is called our common log. In other words, if you see a log written with no base, it's 10. That's the default. You dig? Okay. Log base E also comes up really frequently. We write that as ln x. That's the natural log. And it's the natural log because natural beauty follows from using E. Okay, so what's the point of me talking about this? The point of me talking about this is when you see log X and there's no base written, it's base 10. When you see ln X and you're like, what language is that? That's log base E. Okay. So let's play a little bit more and let's solve for X. What if I want us to solve log base four of X is equal to three? Well, how do we solve for X? Whenever you're wanting to solve for something and you're given a log, change it to equivalent exponential form. 
How do I change this to equivalent exponential form? Four cubed is X. Well, what is four cubed, friends? 64. What if I want us to solve log base five of X equals negative one? Can we solve this? Yeah. What do we do? Five to the negative one power is X. So what is X equal to? If I wanna write that without a negative exponent. How do you get rid of negative exponents? Bring it down to the denominator, correct? So don't we get one over five to the first or one fifth? Darn math, it doesn't allow you to forget anything. You cool this far? What if I want us to solve log X equals five? And it's like, whoa, there's no base written. So by default, what is the base? 10. So can't we say that 10 to the fifth is equal to X? In other words, X is 100,000. What if I want us to solve ln of X equals negative two? By default, what is my base here? E. e. So can't I say E to the negative second is equal to X? Tell me, how would I write this without a negative exponent? One over E to the second. Good. Just wanted to reinforce that. Are you all with me here? And we could compute whatever this is if we really care to. All right. So here, let me show you something cute. Log base seven of 49. How would we do this? Seven to the X equals 49. My friends, what does X equal to? Seven raised to what power gives you 49? Second power, right? Seven squared is 49. Y'all agree? You want to know your squares, those in cubes, those are really good. Well, look at this. Do you agree I could rewrite this as seven squared and we got that equal to two? See that? Okay, so log base seven, instead of 49, I wrote seven squared and I wrote the answer here, okay? Notice. My base of my log matches my base of my exponent. And didn't I just end up with my exponent? That follows precisely because they're inverses. Do you see how this is exactly what we had here? Log base seven of seven squared is two. Isn't that fun? Okay, so what is log base five of five cubed? Three. These two match, you get your exponent. What is log base four of one fourth? 
Well, four raised to what power gives you one fourth? Negative one. Right, we can rewrite that as log base four of four to the negative one. You get negative one. Isn't that cute? Yeah, thanks for asking. Cool. All right, so thinking about negative exponents, what is log base three of 127? I mean, we could solve it and say it's equal to X and then we're solving three to the X is 127. Can I write 27 with a base of three? Yeah, what is it? Three cubed, right? Three times three is nine times three is 27. This is why I didn't let my kids use a calculator until they could like estimate square roots in the 10,000s because I wanted them to like feel the numbers. Aren't you glad I wasn't your mom? <laughs> okay. Well, do you agree I could rewrite that is three to the power of X is three to the negative third power? So we get X to be negative three. But what I'm wanting to, you to know is how this pattern keeps continuing. What is the log of the square root of 10? Awesome. Okay. You do get that to be one half. Why? Because notice this is log base 10. And we can rewrite the square root of 10 as 10 to the one half power. Isn't that cute? What if I want you to find log base five of the cube root of five? Good, one third. We have log base five. Again, we can rewrite the cube root of five as five to the one third power. These two match we get exactly what we were looking for. We're gonna get more into the structure of logs soon enough, but right now what I want us to do is just get comfortable playing with these things. All right, so what if now I ask you, well, what is the natural log of E cubed? It is three. Notice the natural log is log base E and log base E of E cubed. These two match, you get three. Okay, what's the natural log of E to the power of pi? Someone else say it. Pi, good. What is log base 11 of 11 to the ninth power? Nine, good job. You having fun yet? All right. So now what I'm wanting to do is use this other equivalence for a second, just so that we can play with it, okay? What if I ask you, what is 10 
to the log of pi. Notice by default, we have a 10 here. When these two are the same, they're inverse functions. What is this going to be equal to? Pi. What if I want seven to the log base seven of the square root of three? What's that equal to? Those match, what should come out? The square root of three. Y'all with me? So what we can surmise from that is when you have a to the log base a of x, that's equal to x. And when you take the log base a of a to the x, that's equal to x. And these are precisely since they are inverses of each other. So I wanna give you probably the most important property. And again, I will talk about graphing logs, et cetera. But what I really wanna hammer in today is they are the inverse of an exponential function. They allow us to find the exponent. So there's an awesome property of logs. Log base A of X raised to the power of R. Notice these are not the same. Okay, A, X, R is equal to R times log base A of X. This is like the ultimate property, okay, of <laughs> logarithms. What this says is if you're taking the log base A of something raised to a power, you can bring your power down in front. Exponent down in front. See how we bebopped it down there? Now, I can do one of two things, and this is up to um, the six of you. I can prove this to you so you can see that like I'm not a liar and that I didn't just make this up, or we can continue on and you can say, I trust you, okay? You're not responsible for the proof of this, but I do like to offer to show you why things are true so that um, you, know, you can understand it at a deeper level. Um, and it's totally up to all of you. You wanna see the proof? Okay, if you don't wanna see it, don't look, it's my answer, okay? So in order to prove this, we need to use two facts. One of them is that when you raise something to a power raised to another power, you multiply your exponents. And the other fact is that these are inverses of each other. So a to the log base a of x is x. Okay, these are the two facts that we are going to use. Now, you don't have to write this portion down if you don't want to, but I think it's worthwhile to see why it's true. And then on Friday, what we're going to do, because I won't have time today, on Friday, what we're going to do is we're going to go back then and solve this. Remember the question that led to all of it? Yeah, okay, so why is this true? Again, this is not anything you need to write down or you're responsible for, but I love showing proofs because honestly, my friends, this is what mathematics is really all about, okay? This is like why I went into it, okay? So first off, we know A log base A of X is X. Okay, we have this equivalence because precisely because they're inverse functions. So what I'm gonna do now 
is raise both sides to the earth power. Sounds like I'm talking about my dog. In other words, A log base A of X raised to the R is equal to X raised to the R, right? If these two things are equal, if we raise them to the same power, you're still going to have equality. You agree? Okay. Well, when you raise something to a power, raised to another power, what do you do to your exponents? You multiply them. So just so that we're not confused, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is a r times log base a of x. Because I don't want you to think it's x, you're taking the log of x times r is x to the r. You with me this far? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the log of both sides. Again, if you have equality, you can raise them to the same power and still have equality. Similarly, if you have equality, you can plug them into another function and still have equality. So if we do that, we have log base A of A to the R log base A of X, and we have log base A of X to the R. Just plug them both into my log function. So I'm taking the log of that, and I'm taking the log of that. Well, on my right, I have log base A of X to the R. Because these are inverse functions, and we've played ad finitum with this today, what happens to these guys? Don't they cancel out and we're left with the exponent? Right, y'all told me like log base five of five squared is two, same thing. So since these cancel each other out, aren't we left with our log base A of X? Shazam. When you have the log of base whatever of something raised to a power, you can bring your exponent down in front. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start there and we're going to answer our initial question of when will that population be 3,500? I hope you can sleep between now and then. <laughs> Thanks.